finally I'm outside of the gate. Say hi. Hey. This is Mikey. He helped me load this thing. Good and job, man. Where are you from? I'm from King City. Oh, King City. Yeah. Okay. Don't mind lending a helping hand to Sergey. Okay. okay. See you later. Good travel. Yeah, Mike was uh, kind of like walking around the auction. He wanted to to buy something, and then he comes over. Is this hey Sergey? <laughs> I I watch your videos. And so and then he helped me when they were where the they were pulling this monster. Let's see if the short chain will work. Because I just get, put two chains to get from the from the auction. Oh, check this out I knew it so this machine like the tracks are not that are not that tall so you can except they're pretty they're pretty thick So believe it or not, so I spent all this time at the auction and uh, okay, there's gonna be one, there's gonna be two. There's gonna be for this side. Because it's much easier to do everything at the same time. Otherwise, I'd have to jump in and. Okay, I think one more. That's a long one. And so, yeah, Mike helped a lot, you know, with the timbers. But man, it was a nightmare. The, the guy tried to use the winch. You know the wrecker? His 75 ton wrecker was sliding. I said, what kind of a wrecker is this? And he said it's a, it's a Kenworth. But it was a big mother. Yeah, I don't like this. I think it might slide. Oh, so you see, in the middle it's thinner. This is good. So I don't think it's 75,000 pounds because they made me move the trailer because the you know they didn't want to. Even though the guy was, when he was pushing those pedals, one side was turning, but he was pulling the wrecker. I don't know, there was, when they were trying to pull it up a hill. And then when I turned around, now it was going down, downhill, and it was much easier. And so the guy moved it pretty much close to the trailer with the wrecker just by driving. No, so he just hooked up his uh, uh, his uh, big cable, but instead of using the winch, he just started driving. And surprisingly, like he was able to move it much easier than when the winch, when he was trying to move it up, up the hill. And so, 
so so now of course the next step is to get it washed and the buyer gave me some he gave me cash because i remember last time it was not too expensive it was like 65 80 bucks so he gave me 100 canadian because i said i remember there's still there's still a track wash in milton even though there used to be a truck stop there so the truck stop moved son of a gun see this center sticks out story better <laughs> see he gave me some cash because you know I didn't want to go too too hard on the guy because it's not his fault as well but he was complaining to the management and they this they uh, agreed like the Eureka took two hours to load this and so the auction paid for one hour I think which was fair and then they said when they were doing a video you know uh, taking pictures about the machine it was working it was moving I think yeah, in the description it said working. So now I don't know. Now it's now it's two o'clock. Pretty much. I mean three o'clock. Pretty much. The sunset is at four forty-five. I think I just have enough time to get to my yard because if I get the border I just go to my yard spend the night there 
then go to to the track wash in the morning because if I go to the track wash now by the time they finish it's gonna be dark and I won't be able to move and I don't know if they allow parking there Usually I use long chains for this, you know, because short chains are not long enough. But this time I got lucky that the tracks are so low. Last thing I gotta do is
All right. The tracks are so short. I have to do it like this. I mean, they're so narrow. This is not an oversized load, it's a work of art. 1965 Caterpillar. Of course, before they wash it, I'll make sure I, I remove all the flags. Otherwise, they're going to be full of junk. <sighs> the good thing is that on this dozer, there's a rain cap on top of the exhaust so I don't need to put anything on the exhaust all right I just checked the distance it's uh, 88 kilometers to my yard from here so now it's 325, so I have enough time to get there before before dark. Axle down. I see. I see my pressure is just maybe like I don't know, fifty-five thousand. I mean psi on three axles. Whereas for me to have, let's say, um, sixty thousand pounds, usually it's around. What is it? 60, 70, it's uh, yeah, usually around 70, 72 psi. So now it's pretty much like 55. So I wonder how much this thing weighs. Weighs. I 
miss that curb, I got this one. Yeah, I think I deserve some time uh, in Cambridge because I've been here for two days. So I did get a little bit of cash from the customer. He says, yeah, don't worry about the about the rate confirmation. He said, we'll settle privately here. I said, okay. The only thing is, what worries me is that I just called twice. I called the the truck wash and Google says they open 24 seven, but nobody's answering the phone. So I don't know, is it because they're too busy? But I'll call them again tomorrow. Yeah, it was funny how this thing rolled, you know, pretty easy. Like I said, when the guy was just driving, pulling this dozer, uh, and that's why they could not, they were not able to correct the angle. Because whenever they try to use the brake, you know, like the pedal, the brake pedal to brake one one um, track actually, and it was working. With the engine running, the guy pushes the pedal, let's say he pushes the left pedal, the left track stops. But because it was going uphill, it was moving the rotator. Like the entire rotator, the big wrecker was <laughs> sliding on the ice like it was nothing and so they and then they brought it this way and they decided to uh, to back it on you know because in the back the hook is much more solid than in the front and they asked me to reposition my trailer because the the dozer was sitting a little bit off center so i had to hook up to my trailer do a couple of maneuvers like this and then put the trailer, you know, pretty much in line with the dozer and the guys were helping me, you know, they were saying, okay, go this way, go this way. And then the rotator just went behind my trailer, right in the middle. And because he has a boom, right? So his, uh, his uh, cable was not dragging on the trailer because his boom was like, I don't know, 12 feet tall and like the point where the cable connects to the you know to the boom and so that I was worried about that I thought he would damage something on my on my uh, trailer but he made sure that the, the cable was way way up you know and the guy the mechanic who was initially uh, steering this thing I'm guessing when the dozer was going on the trailer, he decided not to chance it. And so the guy was uh, pretty much, he was going straight. He, if he had to steer, that wrecker is so advanced, it even has, uh, you know, it's a, that's why they call him a rotator. Like his uh, big crane, boom, he can turn it. Like within some small, uh, you know parameters not not as 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 wide as a as a real crane or an excavator but still he was probably going like i don't know 40 degrees left 40 degrees right i could go that way and catch uh, 410 but i think it's much longer i'm i'm now a bit pressed for time i need to get and actually you know this thing the only thing that sticks out really is is uh that 
kind of like a ball joint where the arms were for the for the blade and that's why I think over there it's like nine nine feet ten inches but the tracks are almost flush with my trail on this side and a little bit off on this side because of course they could not do it perfectly you know I, I feel pretty grateful that this thing did not slide all over because you know it could have done like this and went down and damaged the edges of my trailer because the edges are not as strong as the center but the rotator was a classic case of big size matters because that guy had a huge you know machine and also all his controls were remote you know I just find that so uh, so much easier to load uh, so he was standing next to the dozer or then next to the my trailer and his rotator was behind him right and he was able to operate uh, operate everything just with the remote He can go slower, he can go faster. It's really nice. Now I want to take 407. And one funny thing about 407 and the ramp from 427 like when I was coming back this way it was so tight like the curb you know when you take uh, when you go on 407 and then you take the exit 427 north it's like super sharp and of course I had the, I had the four axles with the first one and the third one in the air which didn't help much and so my radius was uh, very very wide and I had to stop when I was just, you know, like five meters away from, from 427, I had to stop because I saw that the, the rear axles on my trailer were coming dangerously close to, uh, to the barrier. You know, there was like a barrier there. You know, I hate this part over here. That's why that protective thing is all twisted and because it's a super sharp turn. And that's why I went like this. And actually I'm leaving whole lane there. But that guy is smart. He stops, he, he, he can see what I'm doing. But the danger here is, is that the trailer wheels can go on this shoulder and there's a ditch in there and I see like more than once somebody hit that flimsy uh, flimsy metal barrier all right what's happening here so basically I'm just gonna go straight as far as I can and then turn this way See that guy? <laughs> the guy went. The guy went into oncoming lane. It says 431 uh, ETA to my yard and sunset is at what did I say before 445 
So yeah, the plans for today is to park in the yard, grab my car, and go have a well-deserved feast. Feast of a dinner, slash lunch, slash breakfast. Because I don't think I, I, I even ate anything today. I just uh, stopped by the... I got up at 5 o'clock, did some uh, routine with the hiking poles, and then I went... I tried to find a coffee and the lobbies was closed at uh, Tim Hortons as a McDonald's so then I found the truck's uh, gas station and so I had coffee I didn't see any any food that I can I can eat and yeah so man and so I didn't have anything to eat whole day and now it's 338 so I'm thinking probably Boston pizza Boston pizza because they have this nice uh, garden salad uh, with uh, salmon you know so you, you take a piece of salmon maybe even two and garden salad with some olive oil on the side then I have to set up my uh, border crossing so I have the bond right it just I have to basically uh, treat that bond as uh, PAPS yeah something is happening with the TQ TQL total quality logistics uh, before when I was uh, chaining they offered me to go to Washington Washington State I said no thank you and now they said they have a load from Brampton to Massachusetts and then back to Brampton and I said okay what kind of trailer does it require and they said oh it's it's power only power only I said, well, unfortunately, that's not going to work because I just got loaded in Ontario and I'm going down to Newark, New Jersey. And the guy says, okay. There's a sign on that road that says no trucks. And right behind the pole, there's a five ton truck. <laughs> like around this area, there's a lot of a lot of roads where no trucks are allowed. So this is Bolton, right? Bolton, Ontario. Like let's say you try to go to Walmart or something, no trucks. You know? But yeah, it's getting busy, 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 because it's almost four o'clock. And so the plan is, yeah, we're going west on, this is Major Mac, Major McKenzie. 
I'm gonna go on the Major Mackenzie and then there should be a ramp for 427 yeah and then 427 427 goes south and then I get uh, 407 so that's the quickest way and what's funny is that Milton where the truck wash is where the people don't answer the phone so I don't know if they open maybe they just closed down because there used to be a truck stop there so the truck stop left basically packed and left and uh, but the truck wash remained but maybe they left as well and now the sign says city of one population 327,000 but like I said if I even if I go there and they wash me like what am I supposed to do the after just sit at the truck wash overnight This load is not that, you know, urgent. Milton to my yard it's about 40 kilometers 25 miles but at least I have parking right I have parking that I that I'm paying for and I can go have a nice meal and also have to find um, have to get some stamps and uh, mail a letter to IFTA because I need to have a new new sticker IFTA sticker for the new year and they just send me a reminder with a little form so you have to put a check in for 10 bucks Canadian and uh, mail it to them so I have the envelope they send you a free envelope but there's no stamp so you have to buy a stamp Oh, if I'm there, if I'm there at 4:30, I'll just grab my car and go to my uh, UPS store. There's a very nice guy there, Avdil. Avdil. He watches my uh, videos. I think he's from India or Pakistan. Very nice guy. Like him and his uh, wife, they're running this uh, UPS store. before sunrise so I'll just go back to Milton have this thing washed and uh, and uh, head over to to the border So I have all my permits. I have New I have New York, New York, PA, New Jersey. I'm still supposed to get a permit for that uh, Delaware Bridge, and that's it. Man, so much.
much easier in the summer, you know? seat because the seat was covered in snow when I try to start it I uh, I took one of my you know load blankets that you know you use when you talk and I, I still have a bunch of those from my from my tarping days yeah I thought this lane was ex exiting big happy family traveling west on 407 the toll highway with the official logo the most expensive tollway in northern america in northern america the first fully electronic and the most expensive tollway in northern america welcome to canada
most favorite part about tracking and uh, most truckers would vehemently deny this but we all love a good traffic jam you know because nothing nothing brings us truckers closer than a good solid old-fashioned traffic jam something that you can encounter every day first in the morning and then this time around four o'clock five o'clock around this area Milton Ontario it's beautiful especially when it gets you know the, the the night is coming so people are driving with lights it's so pretty you know trucks with lights cars trying to cut cut each other off it's just so gracefully you know there's something in this I don't know like you see like this guy it's so nice smooth you know he's a smooth operator so yeah I love a good old-fashioned traffic jam like there's no rush right we will all get there eventually So yeah, this is 401. That the one I try to avoid as much as possible. That's why I'd rather pay on 407. Yeah, that curtain drives me nuts. You know, the curtain, it's always uh, moving there and it's hitting the, the TV uh, compartment there. Of course, I don't have a TV, but they give me the compartment where I keep all my junk in there. And so the, when the curtain moves, you hear this? That's the curtain. It's basically those metal uh, hangers that the curtain is on. When they're close together, they start rattling. It's like my late dad was was bad about this, you know. Like we would we would drive our Moskvich, and of course, you know, those Russian cars they're full of rattles anyway. And so we're driving once a year to his uh, dead mother's, you know, house where he he grew up near Moscow. And we're driving this thousand kilometers or 600 miles. It took us two and a half days. <laughs> well, first of all, the speed limit back in the day was uh, 90. Dad insisted on driving 80, 85. But for me, I remember it was it was uh, you know dream summer because I got to drive the car. You know, I got I was what like 16. So no, wait. I don't know 17 18 but a couple of times yeah I was old enough and he was always you know Seryoshka Sproy Scores Sergi slow down and if I didn't comply what he did he would push the lead the transmission lever of course which was manual he would push it right of the out of the position into neutral Back then I was still wondering how you can do that. Like I'm the guy driving, I have the clutch. He knew because it was his car, of course, he knew how to you know, move the shifter just to knock it out of the gear. And so he would knock it out of the gear. Okay, stop over here. I'll take over. If you don't want to drive slow, I'll take over. And so once in a while there would be a rattle somewhere, right? And my dad would go nuts trying to find that rattle while attempting to operate a motor vehicle uh, <laughs> on a two-lane road. You know, and he was trying like this, okay, like this, because of course in a car there's echo everywhere, right? Like the same in the truck. Like I know these these uh, noises because it took me a while to figure out where they're coming from because of the echo. You know, you think it's coming from here, it's coming from there, right? 
And so the things that are rattling here is that curtain and then my steering wheel over here, the plastic uh, plastic case that uh, surrounds the, the steering column. And then sometimes I have, sometimes this thing rattles and sometimes something, oh, and sometimes the, the C, CB radio rattles. It's pretty loose in there. But in our Moskvich, in that Russian piece of uh, engineering, something was always rattling and so the dad would go crazy trying to his head like this like this and then he would order all of us listen like I'm driving like I cannot hear you guys are sitting doing nothing listen where is it coming from it drives me nuts and so the mom would listen she would sit in here or I would be here and then somebody will be in the back seat <laughs> Everybody craning their neck this way and that, trying to find the, the dangerous, drive me crazy rattle. And you can never find it. You cannot find it because there's too much noise, road noise, wind noise. And then of course when you stop, and you cannot find it because the car is not moving. So. All, all the rattles disappear. And we have another slowdown in the front, according to according to Google Maps. That's why I'm not in a rush. I wanted to get to my bank to take out some money for the trip. And it's one of those stupid banks that open at 9.30 but close at 5. And so I'm not going to make it. So I'm going to visit a branch of that bank uh, near the border on the Canadian side. something to eat and then go back to the truck make the video upload the video so I hope you guys enjoyed it sorry of course it was it was again so long but I'm gonna break it into a few parts we're gonna do maybe you know day one day two and then uh, driving with the dozer so thanks for watching so now things should go smoother, except the delivery. But we're gonna cross that bridge when we come to it. So delivery will be very, very, very interesting.